The project I'm about to present came about after the failure of an earlier project started for Doug Ashford's class during the first semester of this year. I plan to go to a restaurant and collect the leftovers from customers' plates for my own consumption as an expression of my deep-seated aversion to our society's wastefulness. This is the logo I made and printed on several t-shirts to serve as my uniform. None of the restaurants I approached accepted my proposition, but more truthfully, I couldn't really accept what I was proposing. I felt embarrassed in equal measure as I felt passionate about the issue. And during my first crit, when I read aloud to Doug's class the proposal which I sent to various restaurants, I felt uncomfortably preachy, extremist even. The critique confronted me with tough issues, such as the necessity of making the activity of eating people's leftovers public if indeed it was an art project. Nobody told me to give it up, but I left the critique feeling strangely broken, and I did what I rarely do. I gave it up. In hindsight, my general understanding is that the project's major flaw was that it encroached too much on the borders of personal activism. It was too sincere. I couldn't inject any irony into it. Having abandoned this project, however, I felt incapable of contriving another one just for the sake of Doug's class. So I created for myself new parameters in which to be productive. I put up flyers around the school advertising my free services to any artist at Cooper who needed help with their work. Doug loved the idea, but being partial to a certain kind of discourse involving the artist's work ethic and the division of labor, he encouraged me to shed the personal and somewhat ironic sob story you see in this first version. So I did. I made one or two more changes after that, aimed at making my offer more appealing to the students. My first job was for Natsuko. I helped her for two hours with a mock architectural prototype she was making. I cut small patches of chicken wire and wrapped them in masking tape. She engaged me in stimulating conversation and recommended to me an art book called Work Ethic, which I read. It was very thought-provoking. By the second job, I started the practice of documenting my labor by asking my employer to photograph me with a camera I provided and to eventually sign a timesheet I wrote up. Many students approached me about taking advantage of my offer, but a good number never followed through. Others felt comfortable enough to use me several times. In the beginning, I often became stressed at having to help anyone who sought me out. However, with time, I grew more assured that the effort I was putting in would not be in vain, that, would in, that it would indeed be accepted as a substitute for doing my own projects. My last critique in Doug Ashford's class where I showed the documentation I had compiled thus far, went over quite well. The only question remained about how exactly I would choose to format the documentation. However, Lisa, when you and I started discussing this project at the beginning of the semester as part of my independent study, you urged me to take it in several new directions. The first was to push the parasitic element of it, to start working in insidious ways, to target the deepest emotional needs of the art students at Cooper, to infiltrate their creative processes. I entertained the idea, but evidently did not feel comfortable carrying it out. You also suggested I elaborate about the social dynamics between myself and the people I helped. You said you found my stories about the jobs fascinating, and you had me film myself talking about them. I must say that you found them more interesting than I do. I still haven't looked at that tape. Later, you encouraged me to go back and interview everyone I helped regarding the experience, their experience. I didn't do this because A, I felt it would somewhat defeat the purpose of saving them time if they had to then participate in an interview, and B, I wasn't really all that interested in what they had to say. I still don't believe there would be any unifying theme among the various experiences, at least not one of any interest. I think most of the participants simply could use some help and I'm sure they all had to overcome a certain degree of discomfort about exploiting me. That's natural. And maybe a few of them derived some pleasure from the power relationship. That's natural too. But just like a temp worker, I was pretty much invested in the task only for the duration of the time I was working. After that, it was out of sight, out of mind. Perhaps I felt a slightly higher amount of obligation towards my closer friends, but not too much. Regarding the interest in what my employers felt towards me, 
you have to consider that it isn't actually that unusual for art students to help each other without expecting anything in return. And in fact, I was getting something in return, school credit. About one month ago, while lying in bed and perhaps ruminating on this stage of my life, the project seemed crystal clear to me. I realized that it is a natural product of envisioning myself as finally out of art school after not only four years at Cooper Union, but LaGuardia High School for Arts and Music, and sixth through eighth grade at IS-72, where my major track was art, and I discovered for the first time how much people like you when you draw really well. When I first started this voluntary work project, I thought of it in terms of conservation, similar to the restaurant project. It was an antidote to the wastefulness of producing half-hearted artworks. As the project wore on, it became the perfect vehicle for discovering how little need I feel to make my own art. I could just be naive, and this may just be a passing fancy, but for the first time since I can remember, my sense of self-worth and identity no longer feel wound up in the quality of my art, or whether I even make art at all. This piece is my transition from art school to the real world art school symbolizing all the institutions throughout my life which have ever compelled me to produce works of intellectual value and the real world being the great unknown. I know you sincerely wished I would make some kind of art project out of this, but the precise point of dispersing my energy in many directions rather than channeling them towards one goal was to avoid arriving at a finished project. As my last art school project, it came at a serendipitous time right before graduation. That is, assuming, Lisa, that you see fit to give me three credits and I actually graduate. And in case you're not sure if I deserve it, I cooked you some organic pear sauce for your birthday. It took me about two and a half hours to make, including transporting the pears. Thank you. You're welcome.